This video will discuss the torsion strain energy terms in molecular mechanics energy functions. So moving on with our amber uh, molecular mechanics energy function, we are looking at the energies now of torsions or dihedral angles within a system. So we might have something here like hydrogen peroxide, where we have HOOH, angle between plane HOO and OOH would be our torsion angle which if we look in this kind of Newman projection here for a, kind of looks like a butane molecule, we could see an example of a torsion angle there between these two different planes. So the energy of a given torsion, once we, you know, we have to specify in some way to our system, maybe we're reading in the molecular coordinates from an XYZ or PDB file, maybe it determines it automatically from those coordinates, or we have to specify uh, somewhere else in some type of input. But once we do, the energy of our torsion is going to be the sum over all of the torsions in the molecule. So one torsion here, uh, nine torsions here in ethane, each uh, distinct path from end to end here of four atoms. That's going to be a sum from n equals 1 to 6. We have the one-fold all the way up to the six-fold terms of one-half times a parameter called the rotation barrier. Then the quantity 1 plus cosine n phi minus gamma. So we have a couple different parameters here. We have uh, n, which is the n-fold uh, level of whatever uh, torsion we're talking about. So particularly in ethane, we're familiar that there's a kind of three-fold rotation barrier as these hydrogens go either eclipsed or staggered. So for, for ethane, we'd only have a three-fold term here, would look like this, versus our torsion angle from negative 180 degrees to positive 180 degrees. For something like butane, you'd have an additional uh, one Let's see, that'd be an additional, yes, one-fold term due to the clash of these two carbons as you go around. Um, this conformation is higher in energy than when it's down here. So that can be represented as a, as a combination of these different n-fold terms. Then we have gamma, which is the phase offset of this. We can imagine maybe we want this minimum to be somewhere else, and we can offset it by changing the value of gamma. Okay, so our, our rotation barrier is an energy unit. So typically we would want that to be in units of kilocalories per mole, if that's the unit that we're working in. Uh, gamma, the phase offset, would often be in radians if you're working in radians with your angles. The variable then would be the dihedral or torsion angle, also in radians. So what this gives us is a graph here. So this is a cosine and it has an n-fold uh, uh, frequency there. So threefold from uh, negative pi to pi radians is going to go up and down three times. So here the gamma, the offset is zero degrees, so the maximum appears at zero. And our variable, as we change here, we go from low energy, staggered, to high energy, eclipsed, low energy, staggered, high energy, eclipsed, etc., etc versus what we'd have here versus uh, uh, this type of gauche configuration or where they are uh, uh, far away from one another. I'm forgetting that word at the moment. Maybe you can remind me in the comments. All right, so we have the energy there can go from a minimum of zero up to a maximum of our barrier height for that n-fold. Uh, so this is uh, V3 would be the maximum height of this three-fold term here. And then our variable, again, as I mentioned, can go from negative 180 to positive 180. So typically these values are somewhere between 0 and 10 kcal per mole. Torsion barriers are usually much weaker than angle or, uh, or bond terms. So 1.4 kcal per mole is the value for uh, something like ethane, a typical HCCH uh, torsion angle. And then the last thing we have to include here, which I haven't included in this term, is a correction for the number of distinct paths this torsion can have. So in something like hydrogen peroxide, there's only one path from end to end here. But in this uh, ethane molecule, there are nine distinct torsions here, which are really effectively the same torsion angle. 
So there's a uh, nine paths there, and that gets corrected in our energy function as well. All right, so those are our uh, torsion terms. So let's take a look at this in term in practice for some uh, computation. Looking from my uh, GitHub computational chemistry repository, as always, running a Jupyter notebook on those directories. Um, I'm going to be running a notebook in that's one level down from the top here in the notebooks directory. I'm going to be running a file called ethane.prm, a parameter file for ethane, where I'm declaring the atoms, their XYZ coordinates, their atom types, indices, etc. Telling the system what is bonded to what, uh, input into the program there, what atomic indices are bonded to one another, like bond angle 213, and then of interest to us are the torsion angles, giving us the four atomic indices of what that torsion is, like 3, 1, 2, 6, for example. And then saying 1.4 kcal per mole, zero degree uh, offset. So the barrier of 1.4, zero degree offset, threefold barrier, and there are nine distinct paths, which are those paths I have listed there. So if we run our molecular mechanics energy program here on that, uh, I'm going to go up, I'm going to go to tab geometry, tab parameters, tab ethane, shift enter. Notice that my torsions are almost nothing because this bond, uh, this ethane molecule is almost perfectly staggered. So it reads in <clears throat> that type of uh, atomic coordinate data that I told it in the parameter file. It's going to compute a lot of bond length and bond energy data as we've compute as we discussed in previous videos. Same thing for bond angles, pretty low energy on all of those as well. And then lastly, we have our torsion angles, which almost these are almost all perfectly uh, staggered being either 60, negative 60, or about 180 degrees, giving us only a very tiny energy for our torsion angle uh, energy strain.